Welcome to St. Raphael the Archangel Parish, St. Margaret of Scotland Church. Today we celebrate the 16th Sunday of Ordinary Time. Let us come together to celebrate the Eucharist and receive our Lord, our Redeemer, and our Shepherd. Father Greco, assisted by Deacon Paul, will be leading us in the celebration of Holy Mass today. of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. Amen. Prepare ourselves to celebrate these sacred mysteries. Let us acknowledge our sins. I confess to Almighty God and to you, my brothers and sisters, that I have greatly sinned in my thoughts and in my words, in what I have done and in what I have failed to do, through my fault, through my fault, through my most grievous fault. Therefore, I ask, Blessed Mary, ever Virgin, all the angels and saints, and you, my brothers and sisters, to pray for me to the Lord our God. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Amen.
servants, and mercifully increase the gifts of your grace, and made fervent in hope, faith, and charity, they may be ever watchful in keeping your commands. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, God forever and ever. A reading from the book of the prophet Jeremiah. Woe to the shepherds who mislead and scatter the flock of my pasture, says the Lord. Therefore, thus says the Lord, the God of Israel, against the shepherds who shepherd my people, you have scattered my sheep and driven them away. You have not cared for them, but I will take care to punish your evil deeds. I myself will gather the remnant of my flock from all the lands to which I have driven them and bring them back to their meadow. There they shall increase and multiply. I will appoint shepherds for them who will shepherd them so that they no longer need to fear or tremble, and none shall be missing, says the Lord. Behold, the days are coming, says the Lord, when I will raise up a righteous shoot to David. As king, he shall reign and govern wisely. He shall do what is just and right in the land. In his, day, in his days, Judah shall be saved. Israel shall dwell in security. This is the name they give him, the Lord our justice, the word of the Lord. Oh. 
A reading from the letter of St. Paul to the Ephesians, brothers and sisters. In Christ Jesus, you who once were far off have become near by the blood of Christ. For he is our peace, he who made both one and broke down the dividing wall of enmity through his flesh, abolishing the law with its commandments and legal claims, that he might create in himself one new person in place of the two, thus establishing peace and might reconcile both with God in one body through the cross, putting that enmity to death by it. He came and preached peace to you who were far off and peace to those who were near. For through him we both have access in one spirit to the Father. The word of the Lord. reading from the Holy Gospel according to Mark. The apostles gathered together with Jesus and reported all they had done and taught. He said to them, come away by yourselves to a deserted place and rest a while. People were coming and going in great numbers and they had no opportunity even to eat. So they went off in the boat by themselves to a deserted place. People saw them leaving, and many came to know about it. They hastened there on foot from all the towns and arrived at the place before them. When they disembarked and saw the vast crowd, his heart was moved with pity for them, for they were like sheep without a shepherd. And he began to teach them many things. The Gospel of the Lord. Friends, this morning we hear about and from Jeremiah the prophet. Jeremiah the prophet was a reluctant prophet. If you know his story and remember it, Jeremiah did not want to be a prophet. Jeremiah knew how dangerous it was to be a prophet. He knew that having to tell people that they were bad could be very dangerous because bad people don't like to be told that they're bad. Bad people don't like to be told that they need to change their lives. But eventually Jeremiah gave in to what was God's will. And so we hear from him this morning in the first reading And Jeremiah, prophesying in God's name, prophesying in God's name, threatens and chastises the shepherds, not the ones who actually took care of the sheep, actual sheep animals, but the shepherds who are appointed to care for God's people. In God's name, Jeremiah reminds them that they are not doing what they were called to do. They were scattering instead of gathering. They're hurting the flock instead of helping the flock. They're discouraging the people. They're allowing the people to be scattered instead of gathering them into the family that God wanted them to be. 
And they're not understanding that they have access to God. They're not understanding that God loves them so much that he wants a relationship with them. The shepherds, in many cases, were failing. They were not doing what they were appointed to do. So Jeremiah, again, has the very difficult task of telling bad shepherds that they are bad, that they need to change their ways. God wants all of his people to know that he is available to them, and the shepherds are responsible for making that relationship work the destructive or misguided ministry of some of them has made it difficult for the people to know and to recognize and even to understand that. So now God must do that work. God must correct it through Jeremiah. Friends, the privilege that we share in this day of free access to God comes as a result of our election by God at our baptism. And it requires that we work toward prayerfulness that can nourish can build up and can encourage us. And in that prayer, our relationship with God is strengthened. In that prayer, we run to God because we understand that we are to have a relationship with him. We understand, no matter how bad the shepherds are, that we're called to relationship with him. St. Paul reminds us in his letter to the church at Ephesus that we've been united in Christ and now that make up all that make up the body of Christ share in access in one spirit to God the Father. And this was made possible only through the sacrifice of Jesus Christ. The gates have now been opened. The relationship is there for our taking. And the gates are open not just for prayer and communication with God, but to access to that eternal life at the end of this existence. There is always the expectation that because of the magnitude of the generosity that backs this gift, because God has given all in Christ to make this relationship possible, that we're going to run to it, that it's going to be important to us, that we're going to want to share it. We're going to want to take in everything that God wants to offer us because he's given all through Jesus to make it possible for us. Closeness to God is not the goal only of priests and religious and deacons. That's not the way God intends. Prayerfulness is not the sole possession of the shepherds, but of all who seek God's care and his protection. All of us. Jesus' invitation to the weary disciples is an invitation to the weary among us who struggle every day to become more prayerful, who struggle to build the kingdom of God and find both prayer and the building of the kingdom to be trying and even discouraging at times. He says, come by yourselves to an out of the way place and rest a little. He doesn't mean bed rest. Of course, we all know how nice bed rest is, don't we? Numerous times when my head hits the pillow, I'll say, thank you, Jesus, for sleep. It's so nice at the end of the day to be able to rest or if a European middle of the day to take a rest. But Jesus is talking about spiritual rest. We know what it's like in building the kingdom and trying to be practicing fulfilled Catholics. It can be tiring and very difficult for us. So Jesus says, come and rest in me. Come and take the opportunity to find rest in my arms. And that's why, friends, I regularly rail, as they say, about a prayer life. It's so very important that we have a regular prayer life when we do take time to stop and to pray and to listen to speak to God and to let him speak to us, to rest in him. You will find if you do that on a regular basis, in a regular way, you're not going to want to do, not do it. It's going to become so much a part of your life and your lifestyle that your daily prayer every day is going to be something you really look forward to, something you really, really want to do because you will find what the benefits are of having a regular prayer time. When people tell me that they don't pray, I remind them that that's the first crack that Satan needs to get into a Christian life to start to destroy it. But aside from that, it's so very important that we have time to communicate with God, that access that he gives us, we want to make good effort on. Come to renew yourself in prayer. Come before the troubles that plague you take you down. Come to a place without distraction, without noise, without pressure. Some place that you've designated in your own home or our churches, which are open every day, and come and spend time in the presence of the Blessed Sacrament. 
Find a quiet place to be and God will meet you there. That's an invitation. It's a standing invitation to free access to God. We need to make an effort to honor this invitation no matter how busy we are. In fact, the busier you are, the better because you are then going to see the necessity and the importance of resting in the Lord. Each day allow God to speak to your heart, an old heart or a young heart, a faith-filled heart or a heart that's not so faith-filled. God is available at any time and any place. It's up to us to schedule him into our lives, into lives that he created in the first place. We have been elected to receive special privilege because we are special through baptism. It's not a privilege that expires according to a calendar. It's not a privilege that expires according to the whim of the one who offers it to us. Access to God is 24 hours a day, seven days a week, even on holidays. He's always there to listen. He's always there to speak to us. The psalm for today reminds us that there is no need when God is the shepherd. The only one who lose are the ones who don't accept the invitation to follow. I believe in one God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all things visible and invisible. I believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, born of the Father before all ages, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten, not made, consubstantial with the Father. Through him all things were made, for us men and for our salvation, he came down from heaven. And by the Holy Spirit was incarnate of the Virgin Mary and became man. For our sake, he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried and rose again on the third day in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is adored and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. I believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. I confess one baptism for the forgiveness of sins, and I look forward to the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Prompted by the Holy Spirit and with confidence in the Father's love for each of us, we offer our prayers now in Jesus' name. For the church, may she be shepherded by wise and righteous leaders who will bring us ever closer to the kingdom of God. Let us pray to the Lord. For all who lead our communities, May God's justice illuminate their decisions. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord. For our faith community, may we use this day of rest to put aside our busy lives and rejuvenate our minds and bodies by resting in the Lord. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For the sick and suffering of our parish community, may they experience the healing touch of Christ. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For the intentions that each of us bring to Mass today. May those who have asked for our prayers feel the love of Jesus as his heart is moved with pity for them. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For our deceased family members and friends, remembering especially Philip Brandy, Robert Bronder, and Susan Flory. May the Good Shepherd lead them to the verdant pastures and restful waters of his heavenly kingdom. Let us pray to the Lord. And for Nancy Schuler, for whom this Mass is offered, let us pray to the Lord. Heavenly Father, with confidence and trust, we offer these prayers today. Grant what you know is good for our souls in this world, 
and what we need for the fullness of our pilgrimage to the kingdom in the next. We ask this through Christ our Lord. Amen. sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God the Almighty Father. O God, who in the one perfect sacrifice brought to completion the varied offerings of the law, accept, we pray, this sacrifice from your faithful servants and make it holy as you bless the gifts of Abel, so that what each has offered to the honor of your majesty may benefit the salvation of all through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. Amen. Lift up your hearts. Amen. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. Amen. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere to give you thanks, Lord Holy Father, almighty and eternal God. For you so love the world, that in your mercy you sent us the Redeemer to live like us in all things but sin, so that you might love in us what you loved in your Son, by, by whose obedience we have been restored to those gifts of yours that by sinning we had lost in disobedience. And so, Lord, with all the angels and saints, we too give you thanks as in exultation we acclaim. See you. 
are indeed holy, O Lord, and all you have created rightly gives you praise. For through your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, by the power and working of the Holy Spirit, you give life to all things and make them holy. And you never cease to gather a people to yourself, so that from the rising of the sun to its setting, a pure sacrifice may be offered to your name. Therefore, O Lord, we humbly implore you, by the same Spirit, graciously make holy these gifts we have brought to you for consecration, that they may become the body and blood of your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, at whose command we celebrate these mysteries. For on the night he was betrayed, he himself took bread, and giving you thanks, he said the blessing, broke the bread and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice, and giving you thanks, he said the blessing, and gave the chalice to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. mystery of faith. his wondrous resurrection and ascension into heaven. And as we look forward to his second coming, we offer you in thanksgiving this holy and living sacrifice. Look, we pray upon the oblation of your church and recognizing the sacrificial victim by whose death you will to reconcile us to yourself. Grant that we who are nourished by the body and blood of your son and filled with his Holy Spirit may become one body, one spirit in Christ. May he make of us an eternal offering to you so that we may obtain an inheritance with your elect, especially with the most blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with blessed Joseph, her spouse, with your blessed apostles and glorious martyrs, with Saint Raphael the Archangel and with all the saints on whose constant intercession in your presence we rely for unfailing help. May the sacrifice of our reconciliation, we pray, O Lord, advance the peace and salvation of all the world. Be pleased to confirm in faith and charity your pilgrim church on earth. With your servant, Francis, our Pope, and David, our Bishop, the order of bishops, all the clergy, and the entire people you have gained for your own. Listen graciously to the prayers of this family whom you have summoned before you. In your compassion, O merciful Father, Gather to yourself all your children scattered throughout the world. To our departed brothers and sisters and to all who are pleasing to you at their passing from this life, give kind admittance to your kingdom. There we hope to enjoy forever the fullness of your glory, through Christ our Lord, through whom you bestow on the world all that is good. Through him and with him and in him, O God, almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. by our 
Savior's command, informed by his divine teaching, we dare now to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy, we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not in our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. Let us offer each other the sign of peace. takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, and the soul Not the food that will pass. 
Let us pray. Graciously be present to your people, we pray, O Lord, and lead those you have imbued with heavenly mysteries to pass from former ways to newness of life through Christ our Lord. 
I was really surprised that no one commented on the new rug. <laughs> no, I'm only kidding. The rug is ordered, we're waiting for it. Just so you know, it's on its way. If you are not on the flock note system, please consider being part of that either through email or your cell phone because when the rug comes and we announce the closing for the, for the installation of the rug, we'll get it out through, through flock note first. So if you're not part of that system, which is a really quick way of getting parish information instead of waiting till the Sunday bulletin, please consider doing that. But once the carpet is in and we've determined when we're closing for the installation, we'll get the word out far enough in advance. You're not going to walk up to the door and find out that it's closed. You'll know in advance, okay? We spread bad rumors. Maybe we can spread some good things too, like when things are... so. But if you're not on flock note, please consider doing that because it is a quick way to get parish information as we get it, we should share it with you. The Lord be with you. May Almighty God bless you, the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit.